into Malaysia a couple of days ago and I spent the last two days at Kenting Highlands with a bunch of other bloggers and media people. There are already vlogs from that part of the trip out so you can watch it if you'd like by pressing the I on the upper right corner. Now I extended the trip to do a little bit of solo travel. When I'm booking an Airbnb, the first thing I look for is location. And secondly, I do get attracted to spaces that are aesthetically pleasing. When I saw this space online, it definitely attracted me, but there's always a little bit of anxiety that will the location actually match up to the pictures? Well, I am happy to say the location has exceeded the pictures. So I think it's time to take you on a walkthrough of this gorgeous studio apartment that I booked because I can't get over it. So one thing that I really love about the place right off the bat is that it's an incredibly secure building. I was actually given key cards which I need to access the lift lobby then I need to use the key card again to use the lift. And then there's a key card again along with the pin to actually enter into my room. It's all very very high tech. If you guys are interested in seeing more of that, I did a separate room tour video on my IGTV. I'll leave a link down below but now let's start at the door. It's a digital lock and when the door shuts, you can hear the bolts going in and you know that you're safe. There's the security panel over here, which has like a door phone and a lot of other stuff. So in case you have someone at your door, you can screen them and be safe. Let's start with the kitchen area. I wasn't going to be cooking, so I was expecting just a basic kind of kitchenette with a microwave, kettle, but this space is very well equipped and you can absolutely cook here if you want. There's a full-size fridge. They've actually left some cider in there, which I think is very, very cool of them. This is all like pantry doors. There isn't really anything there. Here's the gas stove. And there's also an oven if you want to bake, like a really large oven. The sink, the microwave, and there's a kettle on top also. We'll definitely be using that. This is the kitchen counter. Where you can have your breakfast or just about any meal. This place has the television. There are those nice frames as well as that very chic concrete clock with the pendulum. The television also gets quite a lot of channels, but I don't think I'll be watching that much of it. There is a monstera plant here on a raised brass planter. In the living area, there's this beautiful green velvet sofa and a matching chair. Oh, Bhumika and Hina just dropped in for a bit. Bye guys! Bye. <laughs> it was really nice being with you all, but now they are on their way to India. <laughs> and this little coffee table also looks like really really cute <laughs> now let's move to the bedroom area there's this small little i don't know what you would call this like a sideboard just to separate the living and the bed space there's a leather armchair here i really like the styling detail of that bust behind the bed so you have this nice double bed and they've left a little treat here which is very nice here's the wardrobe which has like the essentials, it's even got an ironing board as well as a hair dryer and a lot of closet space. Let's just switch on some lights. I like that there is a separate bathroom here with a shower and a separate toilet. I'm going to be staying alone of course but it's really a nice detail if you have two people staying. So I actually missed this when I took my first round but I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. This little reflective wardrobe kind of panel. You just have to open this and there's the washing machine here as well as some detergent and here there are some emergency cleaning supplies so in case you make a little bit of a mess you can clean up after yourself and be a good guest. The apartment from the 16th floor has a really beautiful view of the city. There are 
some old buildings visible as well as some really nice modern new buildings. That's a mosque over there and since it's Friday, there was a lot of activity here earlier in the day. Here's one of my favorite little things. You guys see that small red and yellow sign here? It's a restaurant and it's named Mumbai Se. I'm not really going to be eating Indian food on vacation because I'll wait to go back to India and eat it. But it made me feel very nice to see a sign with my home city mentioned just outside my window. This is one of the crowning glories of the view. You can actually see the KL Tower from a little bit of an angle. In case you'd like some fresh air, you can even just open this window. I guess I am definitely feeling very fortunate and sort of pleased with myself for finding this space. This is going to be home for the next three days. I have something scheduled for tomorrow, but believe me, if I hadn't actually booked tours when I was home in Mumbai, I just wouldn't now because I kind of want to take in this room as much as possible, but that is missing the point of travel, right? I had held out on unpacking until I actually finished this room tour, but now that I have, I'm gonna just open up my suitcases, put stuff to charge, get my own stuff out so that it feels a little bit more like home and then I'll venture out in an hour or two. That light streaming in during sunset to die for. It feels so nice and it makes everything look so nice. So I just sat and did a little bit of work. Now I feel a little bit more sorted and I don't really have any big plans for this evening. There are a couple of malls nearby so since I didn't really end up getting a proper lunch today, I'm planning to first go out and get something to eat. Let's see what options I have. After the meal, I'll stroll around and see if there's any good shopping. There's also a nice hypermarket nearby and I will stock up the kitchen a little bit because I won't be going out for every meal. So I want to get some things that I can just easily prepare and have in the room for dinners and breakfasts. Just after leaving the room, I went to this nearby mall. I had heard that it's kind of a new mall and there isn't really much there. But it looked good from the outside. So I went in and right enough, there really wasn't much there. I'm pretty sure just one tenth of the mall maybe was sort of occupied and most of it was really like a ghost town, super empty. 
So I did pick up some food there for dinner. Picked up a few small things from Watson's. And then I walked on over to this other supermarket that I happened to be nearby. And the supermarket I went to is the Lulu Hypermarket. Now this is a brand that's actually been founded by an Indian guy. If you've ever been to like Kochi and you've heard of Lulu Mall, this is just basically the same brand. And if you're an Indian in Malaysia looking for groceries, you might actually like it. Because there are so many Indian brands there. I saw like... Shahrukh Khan ads, then I saw Parley Ji and Britannia and MTR and so many brands and plus there's a lot of local stuff and also I kind of saw more vegetarian options even in their prepared food because I know that's hard to find in Malaysia for Indian vegetarian travelers so you might want to check the supermarket out. I did also pick up some groceries that was what I had strung up on my arms. Just spent some time like unpacking all of them here and if you are a weirdo like me and if you sometimes get more excited about going to grocery stores than you do going to malls and all especially in like different countries where there are different things available then you're in luck because i filmed a grocery haul for you guys it's over on my vlog channel you can watch it there few of the things i bought to eat here but most of it i'm gonna try to take it back home hopefully to fit in my luggage for my dinner today, this little food court in the underground floor of the first mall, I saw some good looking Japanese food. I got an okonomiyaki, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's like a savory pancake and it's got like a mix of I guess some meat, some shrimp and some flavoring. I've seen videos of this being made on the streets of Tokyo and stuff. It looks kind of messed up right now because I didn't really carry it too carefully. This is almost like a bento, a Japanese meal. It's got some sticky rice with black sesame. It's got an egg, it's got some veggies, little bit of side noodles and of course the chicken katsu which is this crispy batter fried chicken.